I'm going to show you the extension called LA var or LAVA that you can add to your Genially presentation to interact between the Genially presentation and learning apps. So this is an extension I've been really been waiting for for a while and it just extends you the range of activities you can add to your Genially quite a lot if you want to use it as part of an escape game, for example. So first of all, I'm going to quickly show what learning apps is for people who don't know that yet. So if you know it, maybe skip ahead a little bit to the extension. So learning apps is a free website, which is run by a, a Swiss charity, I think. So you don't need to pay for it and you need an account for it, but the students don't need an account to use it. And it allows you to create lots and lots of educational activities. There are already a lot of ready-made ones in there, so you can look for that, but you, it's really easy to change them or to make your own ones. So here's a quick overview of the different activities you can do. So you can make simple um, gap fill text and crossword puzzles and like a memory pairing game and so on, as you can see. And the great thing is that you can use lots and lots of different types of input. So if I go into here to create a new app, so the great thing here is that for my pairs, I can now choose if I want to match text to text, or I could match a text to an image, or it even auto generates text to speech, which is great for language teachers. And you can choose from lots of different languages as well. So you can, you can add your own videos from YouTube or you can add just audio of a YouTube video as well. And when you go into pictures, it makes it really easy as well because you can upload stuff from Wikipedia and so on, or you can put in the URL or you can upload it from your uh, own computer. So lots of different options, lots of different games. Most of them are meant to be played on your own really, but there are some that can be played as in pairs as well. Uh, if you have local multiplayer. Okay, so this is learning apps and it has always been possible to insert a learning app into your Genially presentation, but up to now it wasn't really possible for the two to interact. So that's what the new extension does, that if you solve the learning apps activity correctly, then something appears on your Genially or something disappears, which is the great part. So I show you the example here. Uh, so to create this, you need three pages, a title page, a game page and a code page. So here's just my simple uh, title page. Here's my game page. So I've just got a really simple match up activity. So we just need to match A to A and B to B. And then when we click the tick, it tells me, yes, I've got it right. And you see here, this little pick has appeared. So that's the important part because that little pig is outside of the learning app and is part of the Genially presentation. And well, a pig might not be so useful, but obviously this could also be the arrow that takes you to the next page. So if you've got um, an escape room activity, it would mean the task has to be solved first before the players can get to the next page. After I've solved the activity, the pick can also appear on a different page. So this is great. So this pick wasn't there beforehand on my page two, but only because it's appeared here or because I've solved this task. So you could uh, say something like uh, solve the, the task and then on the next page, a door opens, for example, which is great because then it means you don't have to squeeze it all onto this one page here with the game on it you need to get used to how to make it because you need to keep on switching between your Genially page and your um, learning apps page. So it's good to set up the Genially presentation before you do the, the learning app, but you can add it later if you've already got your learning app created. Okay, so to uh, create this, you need the title page, a game page, and then the code page. Um, so let's start completely with a new one. First, really, we want to start with, the, start with the code page. So on the code page, I need to put this iframe box here and one of the two green boxes. And as you can see, 
in the name of them it says one session or multi session so if i use one session it means it will only remember it for this one game multi session means it will remember the result for several sessions so even if i turn off my computer and turn it back on again as long as i'm on the same computer and on the same browser it will still remember it for next time and i think it even works in different genially presentations but i haven't tried it out yet okay so we'll go with the one session and we copy these things over um and let's just make a new page so we need three pages Okay, so here's my code page. On this code page, in the end, you will have nothing else but those two boxes. That is it. So it doesn't look very good. So you want to hide this somewhere at the end of your presentation or somewhere where the players can't really get to that page, ideally. So if you've got um, an escape room where you can only get to the next page if you've got an arrow, then the, the students or the players will never see this, which is kind of good. Okay, so now I need to go into preview mode. It will only work in there. And I can copy this iframe here. So this will link it to this page. Now I can go over to my learning apps and uh, let's just choose one. Okay, let's do my example, but I don't want to mess up this one. So just create a similar app so that's the nice thing in learning apps you can just duplicate any app basically and then down here I can put my feedback so I can say well done so this will still be visible after they've done the task and then I paste in underneath this iframe code that I've just copied from my other page now I finish and I save it and now at the bottom here i go to embed and i copy this iframe code so this is a different iframe be careful that you don't get them mixed up now i go back and on my game page so not on the one that has the green boxes but on a different page i go to insert and other and i paste in this iframe inserted and now it's added my um, learning apps game I can make it bigger there we go so this is what you could always do before but now we want to add some action to it so let's say I only want to be able to go to the next page if I've solved this so I put my arrow here and now I need to go back to the template or and from the template I need the yellow box and the green box you could also use the red box so let's just show both of them together so i go back to my game page here you go the yellow is just the code so this needs to just be somewhere in the in the background and but it needs to be within your page then green as you can see says on so this is something that will be turned on once the activity is solved so i want this arrow to turn on so we group this together and then I could also say, okay, when they click on it, I get to the next page. Let's say I also want to turn something off. So let's have um, our little piggy here in the corner. Um, so obviously this could be something that is hiding something because this will disappear once I've completed the task. Okay, so now we've got these two and um, you don't need to use both of them obviously you could have just a green one or just a red one and you can even duplicate it so you could have two different things appearing with this game and um, as I showed earlier you could even have something else appearing on a different page so let's say I want the arrow to appear here but also on this next page I could just duplicate it and have it on there as well but make sure that you've also got that yellow box on every page where you use it okay so then i also need to do something with the title page so this needs to be the page where the game starts or where the player it but the player needs to 
come across this page before they get to the learning apps activity. So it's good to have it right at the beginning of your of your um, game. And also you need to keep in mind when you play testing this that you also start from this page. And all it does is reset the whole thing. So that means that this pick is there at the beginning, but the arrow isn't there. So if you don't start from this title page, then it might show um, in the wrong way around. Okay, so let's play test. Um, ah, and before you play test, you also need to make sure that you've published your presentation. So in this case, I've already published it, so I can go to it. I can play test it. Okay, so this is my title page, but I can't see anything on here because that code is invisible. So I go to the game page and the pick shows up at first. So now I do my activities, so A to A and B to B. And then you need to click the tick. Ah, this one was quite right. Here we go, tick. Now I get that feedback. And you might have noticed the pick has disappeared and the arrow has appeared. So because this is grouped with the green box and this one was grouped with the red box. And if I go on the next page, the arrow has also appeared on there. So it wasn't there before. If I go back to the title page, here yeah, this is my title page that resets it. Now I can go back and you can see the arrow has disappeared again and the pick is back there again because it's all reset. And if I go on the next page, there's no arrow. So it only appears after I've finished the activity, which is great. Important is that you can't group these extensions with a text at the moment. I think they are working on changing that, but the reason is that it is already um, grouped with the text. As you can see, each of these boxes here is grouped with the word game. That's just what I've called my game. And the reason for that is that if you've got several learning app uh, activities in one presentation, it needs to know which ones go together. So for example, here I've already got the example and this example is called a variable. So that means it knows that on this page, I've got the variable bit. Um, so this is going to change if I solve this game. But the other one is called just game. So this pick, because it's grouped with the name game, will only disappear if I solve this one. Um, so that's how it knows that this arrow which also has the word game, goes with this uh, with this activity. So you can have lots of them in, in one presentation if you want to. Just make sure that before you create a new one, you duplicate this template and just change it. So try to change it to something that makes it easy to remember which one is which. So if you've got a memory game, for example, um, then maybe just copy and paste the word memory for all of them. There you go. And now you know you can use this whole template for your memory game and they will all work together. Um, so this black box can go onto the same title page as the other one was. So this one here, I could just copy and paste this and then change this one to memory as well if I want to make it quicker. So now it will reset both the variable and the memory game. But this page here with the iframe, it won't work if you have got two of them. So if I do this, you can see it has changed it to a text and it doesn't show me my iframe. So I can't do that. I will need to use another page for that. So each iframe needs to have a separate page and you need to keep them all in your presentation. You can also not hide them because you can hide pages so they don't show up in your presentation. But I tried it out and it then uh, didn't work anymore properly. So they need to be visible in your presentation. Okay, so because each of the boxes is um, grouped with an, a word already, you can't group it with more words because it will confuse it. If you want to show a message, so let's say you want a well done message, 
what you would need to do is create a text box and then take a screenshot of that. So you could just uh, write something here. Uh, well done. And you can then use Control, Windows key and S to get your snipping tool to snip it. Um, it didn't work now, I think, because I'm recording. But then you can just use that uh, screenshot. But also keep in mind that on learning apps, you can always add feedback into the text box at the bottom anyway, because here I've written well done and then followed by the iframe. So maybe just put your text messages in there and then the action is something appearing, a picture or an arrow.